try to do this share screen thing. Here we go. Um, okay, so do y'all see the PowerPoint? Y'all yeah. see it? Great. Gosh, I almost started getting emotional there, Melissa. <laughs> God, such such sweet words, but they're sweet because they have so much meaning, and it has been such a um, it, it's been a it's been a long I mean three years we've been doing this, and and I look back to when I met Melissa in actually in Colorado, even though we both lived right here and went to the same church. I met her at a ranch in Colorado, and. Um, I knew what a very, very unique and special um, person she was back then. And that's, of course, what drew me to her and drew me into this business with her. So anyway, I appreciate that very much, Melissa. But um, I am um, going, I'm going to talk to you. So for some of you guys that were at the, we did this at a, at a, Muffins of Motivation a while back, and for you, I know that you've heard some of it before, but I've added a little bit and changed a little bit, so maybe it'll be, you'll catch something new, I hope so. Mm -hmm. But um, I wanted to talk about the metamorphosis of a plexus ambassador, and where I got the idea for this, um, for this training was from last October when we went to Leaders Retreat and Carrie Wilkerson shared with us. And she talked for a portion of one of her um, times with us, she talked about um, the, the caterpillar to a butterfly process. And that's actually called metamorphosis. So that is what I am um, gonna kind of, I, I took that and I really had a lot of background on it. And the reason why I have a lot of background on it is because of what is in this picture. And this is my son, Hunter. A lot of you have heard me talk about him. Some of you know Hunter, but he is a, um, he's going to be 23 next month. He has autism and he also has so many um, special gifts. And one is, um, one of his high, high interest levels for his entire lifetime has been butterflies and, and raising butterflies. And this has been such a lifelong journey for him that, you know, he, it went into his uh, painting where he has many paintings that, you know, uh, regarding butterflies. He's had a garden, which we're planning right now to build a new garden in our new home, a butterfly garden. And he's just been like a scientist. I shared before that if Hunter had been college bound, he probably would have had a double major in tuba performance and lepidoptery, which is the study of butterflies and moths. So, um, but he has, he could talk with someone with a full blown scientist, you know, forever, just talking the different species of everything. And I mean, the species of the plants, it's kind of crazy how much he knows about it. But because of that, then we, Daryl and I have been drawn into his world of learning about these. And I am not the science person. I'm about the farthest from the science person as ever there was. But regarding butterflies, I have become, um, where I know a lot more about butterflies than probably any other part of science, uh, technically. So anyway, it's because of Hunter that we've had a passion in our family about this, and it really kind of drew me to this training. Um, this photo says, you can see it, and, you know, obviously we are wanting our new photo to be the beautiful butterfly. That's the whole idea, is we want to... to turn our caterpillar self into that butterfly. And that's what, um, you know, just in as a person, but also in our plexus journey, we want to go there. And so uh, let's kind of walk through that. So when um, we were talking about the actual uh, metamorphosis process, there are the stages of metamorphosis. And there are four uh, stages. One, the first is the egg. The second is the caterpillar, which you're very familiar with. The next is a chrysalis, and butterflies actually make chrysalises, or, or that's the process that becomes a butterfly. Um, the process of caterpillars becoming a moth, that goes through a cocoon. I'm remiss um, if I didn't mention that because I do have, um, you know, Hunter kind of 
leaned over my shoulder with this. So anyway, these are the four stages of metamorphosis with the um, egg to the butterfly. So how does, that, uh, how does that go with our plexus journey? Well, it really goes along really, really well because we have, first of all, the egg is a new ambassador, a brand new ambassador who's just getting started. And then the caterpillar stage of our journey is the learning and sharing. This is where we are um, getting our hands on everything we can and we're learning. And we'll talk about that. And then the chrysalis stage is where we move into um, discovering all of the professional and self-development that it's going to take for us to uh, bring ourselves forward to that stage where we truly can become a butterfly which points to our success and whatever that success is for us and for many of it, it's the jewel ranks for some it may not be but if we're looking to the jewel ranks it's definitely going to need to go through this process so when you're looking at the stage one of the metamorphosis, you have the egg. This is the new ambassador. And if you can see right, you can't even hardly see it, but right at the very tip of that fingernail is a tiny dot, and that is the egg. It is when it, when it is actually laid, it is, you cannot even see it. Shortly thereafter, you can see the little yellow speck, but at the very beginning, you cannot see it. And it is, that is, I mean, we just, when we are a new ambassador, here we are, you know, welcome. It's, we, we are just starting, we don't know anything. You can see those other two small caterpillars that there have just kind of had a few days on that other little egg. And so during the caterpillar stage of our, uh, this is stage two, and during the caterpillar stage, for a caterpillar who is going through this, now um, this photo shows a, um, shows a, photo from Hunter's Garden, and this shows, if you, can, you can't actually see that well, but there are many, many caterpillars on this plant of all different sizes, but there are, are I think I counted when I, when I did it, I think I counted there like at least 10. And so what happens is they start eating the plant, and they eat and eat and eat and literally they'll just eat it to the bone you can see the one stalk there it is like almost completely eaten and that's what happens every single plant will become a bare stalk and they just move right over to the next plant and start going but there are a lot of obstacles in the journey of the caterpillar just in the journey of this one stage they have to look out for ants and birds and you say well ants what's the deal Ants will carry off those little tiny caterpillars. They will look for them, find them, and carry them right off. And, and so uh, all kinds of other insects will, are a danger to them. Also, birds will come and eat them. Um, another thing that has to, that's an obstacle is the fact that they have to be eating the correct plant. It's not just any certain any plant, but every butterfly um, to to be uh, viable, the caterpillar has to eat the correct plant for that species. So, for instance, with the monarch caterpillars, which is my son's favorite, um, they eat the milkweed plant, and they can eat any variety of milkweed. Which there are actually hundreds of species of milkweed, but they that they have to eat a, a milkweed plant. So the the butterflies, when they're laying the eggs, they will lay it only on a milkweed plant. They'll look, and when they find milkweed, that's where they lay eggs. And then that is the only kind of plant they can eat. If they go to another plant and eat, then they will eventually die. Or once they make the chrysalis, they will not ever develop to a butterfly. They have to eat the correct plant. Um, they also have to eat so much. Like I showed you that stalk, it's like empty on that middle part. They will just eat it. Just, it's, it's just fascinating to watch them. They will just eat and eat and eat. And, and um, one thing that happens with them is they go through five um, shedding stages. Um, it's called instar each stage. And what happens is they, um, they have to, when you're watching this happen, you'll see a caterpillar and he's just sitting there and he'll sit there for a couple days and it's, you think they're dead or something like that, but they they have to be very still and then they shed their skin and then that they're all of a sudden bigger and they go through five stages of this to where they finally become very large. 
So how does this apply to us as an investor? Well, when we are in the Caterpillar stage as an investor, we're learning and sharing, and we're learning um, we're, we're starting with like the very basics. We're looking at our, at our little product cards, trying to figure out what, okay, what's the difference between ProBio and BioCleanse? I mean, that's what you're doing when you're starting out. And truly, I remember the, that so, so well, that, that you're just even trying to get the names of the products, you know, correctly. <laughs> and so that is where you start from. Everyone starts in the same place with the same products and the same comp plan. We, all start there so it's not any so even you know your double diamond celeste gwen you know she started in the same way so so it's, an, it's a big encouragement to us that we are all we are all going through the same learning process of learning about our products and business and so no one has a head up on anybody we have the same products and comp plan but so when we're starting we're excited right we're so excited we are um you know there's a reason why you signed up or why you started products. And so it's an excitement at the beginning. Also, you have this passion that you really just want to, you know, do something. You may not even know what it is yet, but you just want to get out there. And there's also you have new relationships. You have relationships with your sideline you're getting to know and also if you just barely knew but you sign up somebody then there are you have some people on your team you have a lot of people in your upline and and you're learning um, about these people and and making relationships with them so that's a new part that you're starting to learn and then you're hungry for the information and the training and um, hopefully hopefully because of how we have so many resources you're able to get your hands on that right away and but there is so much to go through that sometimes we um, you know sometimes you, you don't even know where to start there's so much but you're just kind of learning bit by bit you're just starting and you're learning and you're just you know you're you, you know you know more every week it's really a process that just gets stronger and stronger for you but there are also obstacles along the way of this learning process, right? We have a lot of things that we have that, that kind of can make us uh, less viable as an ambassador, okay? For instance, we have fears, like a fear of posting. That's a huge obstacle because every single um, jewel ambassador, I mean, that I've heard and I've listened to several, you know, diamond panels and jewel panels and every, just almost each and every one of them, when they go down the row and they say, what is something that you want to share that you wish you knew now or, or that you didn't know then? And they almost all say, I wish I hadn't waited to share. I wish I hadn't waited to share. I waited too long to share. They all say this. And, they, and some of them said, I said I would never post on Facebook. And then, you know, they, they post every day on Facebook now. But there is a fear of posting on Facebook or Instagram, whatever your um, social media is. And it's a real, it's a real thing. I had it too. I had, I was terrified. We all are when we get started just because it's really sharing part of ourself and what we're super passionate about. And so we have all kinds of fears, but that can be an obstacle in our growth, in our growth along this journey. If we don't address that, it's going to become an obstacle that's going to make it very difficult for your business to grow. Also, we make excuses, okay? All kinds of excuses, and I still do. We all still do to a certain extent, but what you hope to, happens as you m move through the journey is that you recognize when you're making these excuses and then you turn it around because we're never going to all be we're never going to all be perfect about um, how we're doing our journey but what you want to get closer to is when you start to catch yourself you hear it coming out of your mouth and you're saying okay wait a minute that is not right thinking that's wrong thinking and I need to turn that around and and see the opportunity in this and not uh, make an excuse for it so that is something though that if we if we don't address our making excuses it's going to be an obstacle for us um, also a huge thing huge and this was huge for me was waiting for a story okay I can't tell you how many people that I have um, that have um, joined my team and and I've heard stories from 
across the board that people say, you know, well, I'm just going to wait till I have a story, have my story, and then I'll share, or then I'll um, contact people or tell people about it. And guys, this is, this is just, that's just not the way to think about it. That will really be an obstacle for you because you have everyone else's story to share. Even if you have only had the very slightest result yet, like, oh, I'm sleeping better, or oh, I have energy, you know, that's enough of a story to get started, but you still have the stories of your team, and we have so many stories. If you need stories, you come to your upline and come to one of us because we have stories of, I mean, and we have stories that are life-changing stories huge health amazing miracle stories on our team they're not things that some of them that we can post about publicly on Facebook but we sure can tell people about them and we can say it in a private message in a text all day long so don't don't wait for a story we have plenty of our stories that you can share and it's and and I think that gives more credibility anyway you just started and so you're starting to share with people privately and, and your friend and you say hey you will not believe what I, my my upline she had you know debilitating GI issues and this really worked for her I I think it, you know, it could really work for you. I mean, it's, it gives credibility because not like I don't have migraines. I'm never going to have a migraine story, but I know people who do. And so if I come across that, I'm going to pass it along someone else's story. So please don't let not having a story stop you um, and be an obstacle for you. You need to keep on uh, sharing regardless of whether you have a story yet or not, because there are plenty of stories. Um, so another obstacle that is unplugging from community and by that I mean this community like we're experiencing tonight when we get on a zoom call all with the all with our team and we are learning from each other and uh, an experience we had Saturday where we went down for a boot camp that was just so, so valuable. And I still just enjoy those so much because I learned so many new things. I, it doesn't matter how long you've been in Plexus, you will always learn from any time with the community because I met new people. I heard new stories. I heard new things about products that I've been using and loving and sharing about for three years and I still learn new things. So it's something that, that when you are plugged into community, you will, you will grow. And that's the bottom line. It will produce growth if you are going to plug into what is out there for you to do. Um, the other last obstacle I have written here today is about experiencing rejection. And this is also something that we all have had, uh, and we've had a lot of it. And actually, the more, the longer you're in plexus, the more rejection you're going to have because that means you are getting more no's and more yeses. So the further you rank up, that means you have already had you know, your share of no's, but because it, you have to move through those no's. Um, Eric Worre, who is one of our um, network marketing um, gurus, and I'm sure you've heard his name, he says that you need to learn to embrace the no. And that is very important because if you allow someone to rain on your parade, even one time, you can either go back in your hole or you can decide that, you know what, they are not going to determine my path and my growth. And then you're going to go ahead and, and, and say, you know what, that's okay. I know people who this is helping. These products are changing lives. This opportunity is changing lives. I don't need to worry about that. I just move on. And when you learn to handle an, the experiencing rejection, um, for what it is, just another no on the way to a, a yes, then you will grow and you really, really will feel that um, that much more confident every time that you go through that process. So don't let that be an obstacle for you. So these are just things that um, happen along the way of, of the, you know, the caterpillar stage, which is learning and sharing about Plexus while we're growing in the very beginning stages. So this is a this um, photo is one that shows all of those um, the egg and then the five in star 
stages of the larva. So if you can see that over in the kind of the um, top left quadrant up there, there's that little yellow dot. That's actually the egg that has gotten big enough for you to see. And then there's the different stages of the caterpillar kind of showing what it goes through with every time it's going to shed the skin and what it's going to look like. And it turns into that beautiful, large, you know, healthy looking caterpillar. It's just healthy. And it's gone through so much to get to that point. It's, it's, it's uh, managed to not be eaten. It's managed to, to uh, you know, not fall off the plant. It's stayed it's connected to the plant. It's done all those things, but it has to grow to that stage to move forward to the final stage of stage three, which is the chrysalis. And for us, chrysalis is like professional development, professional and self-development. And if you look at the photos at the bottom, it shows that the, the, the um, caterpillar starts by um, finding a place to um, make a letter, like it looks like a J, they actually call it, it's making the J. And so it, it kind of hangs there for a while. And then it changes slowly into the final chrysalis, which is on the far um, photo over there on the right. But the, it has to find a safe place to do this, to, to go through the chrysalis process. It has to find a place that is gonna be viable for it. Um, and it knows exactly where to go. We had, um, we had a, you know, a lot of plants planted in the ground, everything, and our, um, in Hunter's Garden, the caterpillars would crawl across the ground, over to the fence, up the fence, to the crossbar at the top, and they would hang in the crossbar there and be protected and safe. And it was uh, the great place for them. I've seen some of them go to patio um, tables and go underneath the table on a patio. They will crawl over to the table, go up there. Um, I've seen some that stayed, tried to go on a branch of a plant, but that wasn't strong enough and they would fall to the ground. And when they do, it's a very, very, uh, it's, it's super, strange because when it goes to the ground it just dissolves into liquid because that that is what happened once it's in the chrysalis and that's what we'll talk about that but it has to be supported in a safe place um you know so it has to be supported that's part of it by the strong base that it makes to hang from and um it has to just be ready for the process to take place because it's going to be a uh, at least a two week process of once it's in the chrysalis, it's going to be there. So it's going to be ready for that process to take place. Um, one of the most curious things that happens when you're watching these um, caterpillars uh, form into the chrysalis, and we've watched every stage of it. We've sat there just for hours, just engrossed and watching the whole thing. And, and it, it's just really a beautiful process. But in the second to last photo to the right, it shows that the, um, you know, it's, it's uh, getting closer to finishing up, up the chrysalis. And at the very top, there's a little bit of the larva left, a little bit of the caterpillar. And at the very end, when it's almost completed, it will shake and shake and shake until that last piece of the larval state um, shakes off to the ground. It just drops to the ground. But it shakes and shakes, and I'm, I know the first few times we saw this, we just thought, oh, it's going to, it's going to fall down, it's going to fall down. But it doesn't fall, because that's part of the process. It just really has to, you know, dig deep and get that last part off so that it can really do its work inside. And once it is completed, it completes a hard shell that's green there, like in that photo. This is, this is the monarch. Um, chrysalis. Others look different than that, but it does actually transform into goo inside, and that's exactly the word that Carrie Wilkerson used with us. She said, inside the chrysalis, it is gooey, liquidy goo, and it really is, and it's so uh, amazing. This, this process is just so amazing that from that caterpillar breaks down into goo, and then 
what be, happens next, you know? So for us, what does that mean for our journey? How can we apply this to being an ambassador? Well, you learn and learn and learn and learn. And then there comes a time where most likely you have some people on your team, you are, you really want to move to the next level. And you do start to understand that there's another step I have to go through. And that is the professional growth. And this was true for me. I probably uh, went probably at least a year where I just was kind of finding my way, everything else. And then I really knew that in order to move forward, I was going to have to really take a good hard look and do some work. And work was going to be done on me. And so to do that, you have to have a lot of things going on. You have to have humility because you have to say, I am not the finished product yet. I've got a lot of work to do. And so you have to just recognize that and say, there's so many things that I can, I can learn from and grow from. And then there's a lot of prayer that goes into that because for me, um, you know, just kind of praying about what do, what direction am I, am I supposed to go in? And what are the things that I really need? Uh, you know, I want to, the Lord to show me what are the parts in me that have to change because it's different for everybody. Everyone doesn't have the same things that need uh, work. We have general things we can learn about leadership, about different things. But when we're really talking about um, the things that have, we have brought with us into this process, it's a lot. And we really have to, you know, determine what is it exactly that I, I need to, to look at in myself. And then another thing that's so important is coachability because, you know, we have amazing, amazing upline strength in our team. You know, everything from, you know, obviously Melissa and then Roz, her sponsor and Celeste, her sponsor. I mean, we can go right up the, right up the chain and see that there is such strength there and they have set a path and they have have given us a, a a process that if we follow that process we could be very successful and so but that requires being coachable doing your own way making your own uh making your own uh, reinventing the wheel that may work for a while but I would say, I would, I would suggest that there has been a process that's been so rock solid successful that for me, I say, you know what, I want to see what are they doing and what do they say for me to do? And then that's what I need to look at and see how can I do that to the best of my ability and, and using my gifts and strengths. And so how do you get to do that? Well, there's several ways. One is reading books. And I said, I said this before when I did this for Muffins and Motivation, but it was right after a time um, that Melissa had challenged us to start reading every day and to read 10 pages a day. And I had heard this before. I think it's, I think I'd read it in uh, Millionaire by Half, uh, yeah, Millionaire by Half Time, um, Presley Swaggerty's book and then others have said uh, many others say read every day and so I did that and it really changed everything for me but there are so many books that if and I, I just went through uh, the books in my team uh, training last week but um, if you want to know some good books, you know, we can all point you to many good ones, some that are really great for a first a new ambassador and some that are really great once you you know you're really ready to move into leadership so many books but but I believe that that is a really great way to grow because you really learn from from other people's experience and expertise it's a it's it's crucial really it's crucial so that is one way and then obviously listening to calls there are so many great great um uh, videos and calls out there just by even Plexus ambassadors. We have such a wealth of amazing people in Plexus. We have leaders at Diamonds and All Jewels who are, you know, strong believers who are, are professionally, you know, excellent and have so much to share. And every time I listen to you know, these videos and calls, I am blessed in so many ways. But, you know, how do you, how do, you do that? How do you fit it in, the calls and the videos? Well, you know, uh, you've heard of the Rolling University. 
right? Um, when you are in your car, make use of your time. I have, um, I have some people who, who say that they really enjoy listening to books on the books on tape where they, you know, listen to the CDs or things like that. That's awesome. But you can also just, you know, decide, I, you know, what, when I'm running around during the day, if Hunter's with me, I use that time to come to have conversation with him. And, but after he, I have dropped him off, I have one or two videos that I know I'm going to have playing in the seat next to me. I'm not getting to watch them actually, but I'm listening to them while I'm running around. And there's nothing that says that you have to sit down with uninterrupted time for 45 minutes straight and listen to a video. Uh, I listened to one the other day that took me like, I, I think about five times to finish it, five times of hitting play because I was, you know, I had various things I was getting in and out of the car doing things, but um, there are so many ways to, to do it. Put it on while you're getting dressed in the morning, while you're cooking dinner, um, all kind. there's all kinds of ways you can get it in. And it is a, it's a, it's a crucial part to your growth. And when we're talking about five, three, one, that last number, that one, is train yourself, train someone or yourself every day. This is a perfect way to do it. So um, I would just say that that um, the more you watch, hear, read, you're going to learn so much more, and you're going to be really, really um, moving forward in that development. And the last thing that I have on here is accountability. Um, if you don't have anyone who is holding you accountable. It, it can be a sideline. It can be an upline. It can be just any, just someone else. It doesn't, it can be someone even not on our team. But if you don't have that person, then I highly suggest you find someone who, who can be that person with you where you have a, an ongoing um, rapport, an ongoing conversation that really holds you to accountability because you are going to need that because there are many times that you're not going to feel like doing any of this. You're going to feel like that is not, you know, what, oh, you're, you're not going to get that self-talk going, that negative self-talk, and you need someone who can encourage you and, and help you out of that place and get you right back on your path. So, so I highly encourage you to find that person that can be, uh, give you accountability on a, a regular basis because that's really going to help you. So once you have kind of gone on this road to um, professional and self-development, so what happens next? Well, for the um, butterfly, the next, I mean, the next thing is the emergence of the butterfly. So one thing that I want you to see, and this is a really, really beautiful part of this whole process, and that is in the very first couple pictures there, you can see that the, the shell that was solid green, it starts eventually getting more and more transparent. And it takes sometimes a couple or three days out of the process where you can see it. And that's how, that is how you know the emergence is about to happen because the shell gets completely clear and you can see the beauty of the wings through the shell. The image is clean and clear. And that is such a crucial part for us to understand that uh, about, about this process, that there is a certain time when you really feel like you are coming at, gonna come out of that chrysalis, that it's really gonna be a clear picture that comes out, you're gonna come out stronger on the end. And once that, um, once the, the shell becomes clear, the butterfly has to break through the chrysalis and immediately when it breaks through, then it has to start pumping blood into the veins of the wings. If this doesn't happen, the butterfly will die. The, um, we've had some that got stuck in the chrysalis, couldn't get out. And we had, we've tried a couple times to help them out and they die. They have to do it themselves. They can't be helped. It's part of the process that they must do. When they come out, they pump the blood, and you can see in the fourth picture there, there's the thorax, it's very, very large. And what it is full of blood, and what it's doing, it's going to contract and contract and pump that blood into the wings 
because the wings are all like wadded up in a little ball and they just become, they start to just open up, open up. And eventually they, they are fully opened up and like the far right picture. And then the butterfly sits there and it has to let the wings fully dry. If they don't become fully dry, it will not ever fly. It won't ever be able to fly. It has to be fully dry to be able to move on. So it waits and waits and waits. And then all of a sudden, it starts to flap. And it's like, you know, it, oh, it, you know, it made it, it made it. And it's really exciting. It's so exciting to watch that. And then they fly immediately to another plant that is different from the one that they were feeding on. They go to a different plant now to get nectar for food, but they immediately go and they start getting the nectar. And then they, um, they start their long journey of migration. And migration is a whole nother thing that's just so, so, such a beautiful process. But it's a long journey and it's very, very hard. So they have to have a lot of, um, they have to be fully ready for that. So how does that, um, how does that translate to us? Well, first of all, you know, how do you know if you are ready to emerge out of a chrysalis? Well, you know what, I'm not sure I am yet. Okay, it's really not something that like all, all of a sudden you're going to know. I think it's going to be such a gradual process of you really becoming, seeing yourself. I've said here, seeing um, herself or himself as a clear, beautiful image. I think that, you know, this is where you'll see a lot of sermons um, attached to the metamorphosis process because, you know, we can see ourselves, see, you know, ourselves as an image of God. And that beautiful image is what we need to see. We need to see ourselves as God sees ourselves. But part of that is when you have just really, really, uh, you know, really gotten down to where you're not, you are not uh, covering up any of your own, um, you know, your own hangups, I want to say, because if that's part of the growth process. You have to be honest with yourself and you have to be ready to dig deep. And when you do that, you start to emerge and you're strong and you know the way that, that the way that God sees you and that you want to, to portray yourself to other people. So when that becomes clear, that's when you're starting to really emerge as a strong leader and um, you know, you're going to need to take time, just like that butterfly has to be still and wait for those wings to dry. You're going to also need to still take time to reflect and pray and have time to really, you know, look back and, you know, say, okay, you know, what have I learned? What, what, what do I need to do now? And you really chart your course. Um, and you're still doing that professional growth and your personal growth, that's never going to stop. It's still part of the journey. But you set goals and start moving forward. You know where you want to go. You know where your destination is. Just like all of these butterflies in these photos, these are in Mexico where they go for migration. They know exactly where they're going. They know exactly the journey. And they, they join others on the journey on the way down there in the, in the, in the flight process. But... Um, you know, and they lead others in the journey and then they get to their destination. They know where their destination is. And that is what we also will do once we have done the work and we've gone through this um, process of growth and professional growth. And we've really, really um, found out what are, where we want to go in this journey. Um, and so that is really the, the, you know, the process of the whole um, metamorphosis. And so I have two more things to share. One is that um, this is a picture that says nothing happens until the pain of remaining the same outweighs the pain of change. And that's so important because if we don't want to change enough to go through that chrysalis process and become goo, and it's not fun and it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard every step of the way. But if we're not ready to go through the pain of the change, then it will stay the same. But you have to remember one really, really critical thing. And that is that without the metamorphosis, the caterpillar will never fly. It will not fly. 
And so if we want to fly, if we really want to fly in this business, and as a Plexus ambassador, we have to be willing to go through the process. We have to go through the process. We're not going to just fly. We might have a little a fast spurt in our journey that moves us along kind of quickly, but we will not ever fly till we get through that process. So that's what I have to share. Wow. That was so good. Thank you so very much for walking through that with us. You know, it's interesting of even what you said mm -hmm. in regards to the pain, the, um, the one just prior to this, that graphic, mm -hmm. I continue to hear. And if you watched any of Wendy Larson's video, her dishing with the diamonds or even, um, the one that we just went through, I can't even think of her name, Laura, uh, Medina, Sheila, but they talk about the pain and anything that's usually anything that's worth having, right? There is a process of pain uh, that you have to go through and that you have to participate in. And for many people, if anything is uncomfortable, then you pull back immediately to not feel that discomfort or that pain. And it never allows us to change or to move forward or see success. And so I, this is like one of my favorite trainings. So thank you so very much for sharing this with us. I hope for everyone, I hope that this was good for you. I, I hope that it made sense of the process that we go through. So thank you so much for being on tonight. I can't wait for us to be together again next time. Um, and you guys have a great night. Laura, again, thank you so very much. Y'all have a good night.